Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to show you how to update your laptop to Wi-Fi 6E and be ready for the future of different networks and routers out there for about $30. In today's video I'm going to be updating the laptop that I'm recording this on right now. This video is going to be three parts. Um, the first part is going to be me guiding you through uh, the early installation process and a few things you should bear in mind then. We're going to get to the nitty gritty and get our hands dirty and set up the uh, adapter in our laptop and finally I'm going to be then showing you the successful output of what we're doing now why am I doing this well I've got quite a few Wi-Fi 6e router reviews in the pipeline a few new products that are coming out late this year that I've been you know kindly been sent for me to review here on the channel and for the last couple of years I've been running a Wi-Fi 6 setup all the way through this studio however with Wi-Fi 6e routers arriving on the horizon I thought it only appropriate to upgrade the main testing laptop the one that you're watching right now to Wi-Fi 6e which is what we're going to be doing today so I thought if I'm going to be doing it anyway I might as well show you how it's done so for those that aren't aware, a couple of years ago I updated the primary laptop, codenamed Mega Drive, in my studio to Wi-Fi 6. I used this adapter here, and this is the Killer Wi-Fi X adapter. On top of that, I made a whole guide about it, guiding you through the process, the components, what to look for, and I am going to be creating a new guide just like this one for this Wi-Fi 6E installation. On top of that, we, we make our way back, we can see that I actually produced the whole walkthrough on how to upgrade to Wi-Fi 6E here on the channel. It went ahead and went through all of the steps and then did the installation, showed you exactly what to do bit by bit. And that's kind of the format that today's video is going to take. Now, as mentioned, there are other uh, adapters out there. Here's one. This is a Wi-Fi 6E M2 adapter for just £27. That's less than $30 in the current exchange. On top of that, the one that I'm going for today is this one, the MQ. Now, this is a Wi-Fi 6E adapter. It's £32 right now. In the US, it knocks around for $32. In Canada, oh, sorry, in Germany, it's actually a bit more expensive at €67. Euros. In Canada, it's €39 Canadian dollars, and it's €30 Euros in France. Now, regardless of which one of the adapters that I just described that you go for, there's a few important steps you have to take early doors. The first important step is to identify that this adapter is going to be compatible with your laptop. So there's a few different ways in which you can find that out. The first thing you can do is head into the PC settings or just go into the My PC option there. And then from there, select the C drive, then go up to the computer tab and then select system properties. This will give you a bit more information about your system architecture, what you're running, but it doesn't go into a huge amount of detail. Now, next, you can either go into device manager here, or you can go ahead and just type device manager at the bottom, and that will open up, probably not accidentally clicking something else in error, device manager there, and that will open up the device manager there for you, or alternatively, if you are using the full menu interface, such as using Windows Shell like I do, go in and select Control Panel, and then from Control Panel, select Device Manager. The Device Manager will then open up, and then from there, scroll down to Network Adapters. In here will list the available drivers and physical network adapters that are listed. And as you can see, there is that killer Wi-Fi 6 adapter, the Wi-Fi 6 adapter, not 6E. And what you can do is go ahead and pop that into Google, depending on whatever network adapter you're currently running, which probably won't be the killer, and then you can find out more information about this adapter and whether you're going to need to go down an M2 route or get another kind of adapter. But for this, this is an M2 adapter on this laptop, and this is the one I'm going to use. Now, again, if you want to double check the performance you're getting at the moment, once again, either type network connections here into the search bar, or select it if you've enabled that option in your graphical user interface. There you can see I'm connected to a Wi-Fi 6 router, and from here, if I double click, you can see that I'm running a Wi-Fi 6, 1.2 gigabits per second or 120 megabytes per second connection and I can go into more details and find out what I'm running and ultimately there is the name of our adapter. Once again, if you Google these adapters like I did here, you can find out the build of it. So there's the killer Wi-Fi 6 adapter, scroll down, 
you can see that it's built on an M2 adapter. That's what I'm running. And this is what you want to find, an M2-2230 adapter there. That is what we are looking for. So now we know that I can install this M2 adapter and we know that this new one that we're going to be utilizing is also an M2 adapter, we can go straight ahead, hold your high horses. The next thing we need to do is make sure we set a nice safe working environment. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have completely removed anything that can cause static, either on our clothes, perhaps wearing rubber gloves, or making sure that we are grounded. If you do introduce static into your motherboard, you can completely fry your laptop. So do take care, and there's plenty of guides online to make sure that you're either dressed appropriately or in the right environment to conduct these kind of things. The second thing you need to do is make sure that you've backed up your laptop because even though what we're doing is a very minor procedure, it's important to note that you are still dealing with the internals of a laptop. So you may accidentally, you know, through no fault of your own, damage its internals. So if you're going to open up your laptop, make sure you back up. The third thing you should do, which will save you a lot of time later, is to download and install the drivers for your adapter in advance. If you do this later, you will your adapter may not be able to function without the drivers in the first place. So in the case of the MQ adapter, like a lot of M2 adapters that feature Wi-Fi 6E, they use uh, an Intel-based component, the AX210. Head over to Intel, via this link here, you can see a description at the top, or a simple Google will show you, and you can see the drivers you're going to use. Now, unless you're running a Mac OS or running uh, an ARM 32-bit system, the drivers you're going to need are the first one and the fourth one. The fourth one here is the network adapter. And what this will do, once you've downloaded it and ran it from within where you've downloaded it here, these two apps here, once you've run these two apps, they will have the drivers in the system. It won't cancel out your existing um, wireless adapter. All it will do is keep the drivers on record. And later on, when we install our new adapter, it will have the drivers all ready in order to run it. And then we can just connect to the internet. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is when you are conducting this operation, make sure to have any Wi-Fi connections that are saved to your existing Wi-Fi adapter that are important written down somewhere or backed up somewhere. Otherwise, once we change over to our new adapter, all of the existing Wi-Fi connections and SSIDs that we've connected to up to this date will be forgotten because they are saved to the adapter that you're currently using. This new adapter doesn't have any of that information. So just remember, moving to a new Wi-Fi adapter will then remove all of your existing saved wireless connections. So make sure you've made a note of those passwords. And the last thing is we're going to shut this laptop, laptop down completely in a moment. You do not want to conduct this operation with mains power connected to your laptop. If you can remove the battery, that is also recommended. But otherwise, if your laptop battery is un it cannot be removed, such as in the case of this laptop, this Razer, then it's recommended to make sure you stay as far away from the battery or any exposed copper that you have. Otherwise, it can create a short circuit. So make sure of that. But otherwise, I'm going to shut this laptop down now, move on to the second camera, and we're going to start the installation of our adapter. Let's go. Okay, so we've shut the laptop down. And first and foremost, I apologize for the sound quality for this part of the video. Generally, I would have a microphone run around into the front of the table, but unfortunately, proximity-wise, that's just not gonna be possible. So hopefully I'm gonna come across lovely and clear in this part of the video. And really, you're here for the visuals anyway. So first and foremost, there was the adapter that we ordered from Amazon there. Again, loads of other shops are available, of course. And indeed, that is all we get. There is our tiny little adapter there on screen. If we open that up, have a look inside. Our anti-static bag. And there you go. We've got an extra screw for installing it. We're not going to need that. And there is our teeny tiny adapter there. So we're going to unpack that and make sure we've got that to one side for the next stage of this video. So again, we've shut the laptop down safely. Uh, we're unable to remove the battery uh, prior to this. Let's pop that there. Prior to this, with this teeny tiny adapter there on screen, if the lighting wasn't being a problem, um, 
I've already removed most of the screws from the base level of this laptop. So if we shut the lid, we're gonna make our way into the base of it. There's screws all the way around the edge. But again, it will depend on your laptop. Um, this is a, a Razer, um, I think a fifth gen, this one. So again, you've got the weird little logo, ignore where it says Dreamcast, that's all about me. So again, next thing we're gonna do is start removing our screws. So as I say, I've removed all but two of the screws already. Screw there. And then inside, we'll be able to see the internals of this laptop. And again, your laptop is more likely gonna be different to this. There we go. We've got the external casing off. So we're gonna remove that. We'll come back to you later. And there is the inside of this laptop there. So we can see we've got everything there, the cooling fans, the battery that I can't remove. We've got copper piping here on the side. That's from my graphics card internally. And that's pretty much everything we've got to be concerned with. So the thing that we're interested in the most here is right there. There is the previous adapter there on the bottom. So what we need to do is start to remove that adapter there. So I'm gonna change the angle of the camera and then we're gonna go through the actual removal and installation of our new adapter. So the first thing we need to do is very carefully remove this cover tape right here. Again, more than likely, there will be this affixing fabric tape on your laptop components in order to keep things in place. It's also very good uh, for reducing static, but right now we're just gonna peel up that label there to expose our adapter. Now, you may see, if we bring this close to the camera, those two small metal strips coming out, two small clips right there. Those are the antennas located around the edge of the laptop that work with this adapter. You're going to need to very carefully remove those in just a moment. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this adapter. You're gonna need, in my case, a Phillips head screwdriver and popping it there in the top and just slowly removing it. I strongly recommend a magnetic screwdriver, so that means you get to keep the screw. Pop that down there, and now we can slowly leverage this adapter out of the connection. There is a killer Wi-Fi adapter from before. Now, as mentioned, if we bring this closer, there are the two antennas connected that attach this adapter to the wireless um, uh, antennae located around this laptop. So what we need to do now is slowly remove them. They clip, they'll just lift straight off, like so. And there is our old adapter now removed. So we'll pop that to one side. And now we grab our brand new adapter here. This is that Wi-Fi 6 adapter right there. And again, what we need to do is using the same arrangement reattach our clips. Again, no soldering is required. These clips just clip straight on. You'll feel them clip. You'll just go straight on, clip, like so. And as soon as they're attached and you feel them click on, the second one is always a problem. When you feel them click, then you can reattach the M2. Now the two adapters have clicked in for those antennae. Once again, lift up that black tape that you probably have covering it, and then just neatly slot the M2 in at a slight angle, and then you can press it down and then replace that tape. As you can see, there it is right there. Then we need to re-grab the screw from earlier, replace it, and then slowly, gently reattach that screw. Now we've installed our brand new adapter as you can see there there at the bottom i apologize for the lighting our new m2 adapter is installed and then now all we need to do is get back the lid of our laptop replace it and then start to reattach our casing now again it will differ depending on your laptop how you get into the uh, internal framework of it However, I will state that laptops in the last two to three years, with the exception of ARM-based systems, uh, MacBooks and Chromebooks, the majority of them 
all use M2 uh, Wi-Fi adapters. Do check in advance before you buy any, but as an upgrade for just $30 to add Wi-Fi 6E and able to take advantage of a broader spectrum of frequencies in order to take advantage of, it's really hard to doubt that there. But I'm gonna go ahead and install the remainder of these screws and then I'm gonna reboot my laptop, get back onto the desktop and then walk you through the completion of what we've done. Let's fast forward to the completion of this. Right, so here we are back onto the desktop of our laptop here on screen. And once again, if we go to the bottom and go into the device manager, we're able to see straight away that boom in the network adapter connections. There is our Intel Wi-Fi 6E adapter, the AX210. And again, I've already connected up Wi-Fi connections there. It's all nice and visible. And indeed, because we installed the adapter in advance, make sure you install that adapter. We can see that that connection is available. Wi-Fi 6E at 160 megahertz. Now, right now, I'm not connected to a Wi-Fi 6E router. So the only benefits we'd see really is the fact that this device can still communicate with Wi-Fi 6 and of course, Wi-Fi 5 behind it. But as more impressive routers arrive with support of that six gigahertz frequency band, the result is gonna be that there'll be a lot more 160 megahertz connections possible. And therefore that extra lane, that extra pathway for much faster connections being made available on Wi-Fi 6. We talked about Wi-Fi um, uh, taking advantage of the 5.9 gigahertz band when we were talking about Synology's router, and that is still a viable option for a number of you out there. But right now, if you are looking in the future of Wi-Fi and you've looked at Wi-Fi 6E and thought, do you know what, I'm gonna get involved, it's nice to know that with the utilization of just a simple M2 adapter for just $30 right now, it's a no-brainer that you can go ahead and install it. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. There should be a written guide linked in the description below where I've gone through all of the steps as well as links to the adapter and some other recommended adapters you can go for. There's also, um, there is talk I've seen online of a controller for a Wi-Fi 6E to USB dongle, um, hopefully by the start of 2023. But if you can't wait for that, or you are running a simple laptop that has an M2 adapter inside, this is a really easy, straightforward, and low-risk way to increase the performance and bandwidth of your laptop. It, there are some tablets out there as well that take advantage of that exact same adapter, so do check those out. But otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed the video, as it really helps me develop this channel better and better. Click subscribe to learn more as we talk about Wi-Fi 6E moving forward, and take advantage of the free advice section and the link to the guide in the description below. But otherwise, I'll see you next time.